Hey, just a quick shout out to all the wonderful comments that we have been getting on the past few videos. Sorry, real life has kind of stepped in and we haven't found time to reply to you individually yet. So thank you all. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episodes 25 and 26. To where and back again? That was a wonderful season finale, except for the fact that it needed build up. They had plenty of opportunities to give us more information that would have made these two episodes way more enjoyable. But they didn't do it. They, like, did one thing, and it was so late in the season that it didn't really even matter, except for introducing the character and getting him out of the way. Thorax should have been introduced in episode 3 of this season, and then shown up in either letters or or visits throughout the season. It would have made this finale so much better just by his presence being there throughout the season, giving us bits of information like, oh, I don't know, that Queen Chrysalis's throne can suck magic? Or learning sooner that he's no longer starving? Or finding out that his wings have changed? That's my only real issue with this season finale, is just like the previous season finale with Queen Chrysalis in it, it comes out of nowhere! <laughs> However, you do have to give them credit. We have had build-up with Starlight over the season. <clears throat> so the build-up of her character and this being the culmination of what she's learned in dealing with her issues works very well. Yeah, that's the same grace of this episode, but they should have done it with Thorax as well. I agree with you. I'm just saying they managed to do build-up for one section but they neglected to do build-up for the other section. It's Canterlot Wedding all over again, but without the cool song. Yeah, because even my small group of friends go, yeah, we don't really care about Thorax. We have no emotional attachment to him because he was there and gone. There was even, like, little drops of information after this. They had episodes, they could have done it. They had enough time, they could have done it, but nope. Yeah, a simple background thing of Spike getting a letter, something casual as an aside. It didn't have to be the focus of any episode, but little tidbits like that would have both gotten us more invested in Thorax and would have had the changelings more in the forefront of our minds. Mm-hmm. And you could have, like, you know, mentioned the conversation. It could have been even Twilight mentioning something, because you know she would have interviewed the poor heck out of poor Thorax. She would have questioned him Hours on end until Cadence went, darling, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> so she could have made it as an aside, like, isn't it interesting how the Changeling Throne can suck magic? Or just something very off the side that we would have forgotten by now. And then when I got, <gasps> during the episode, which is the best feeling you can get when you're watching an episode. <gasps> they did that. They, they, they foreshadowed that. They foreshadowed that. And we didn't realize it. Yes, which would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Also, I felt like an idiot partway through the first episode because even though I knew the episode had changelings in it, thanks to Lux not being careful with his browser tabs, I still didn't see it at the exact correct moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry about that. And another thing that is only a little kind of technical thing based on how they described how the throne actually worked is theoretically, Discord should have been teleported and everyone else right to where Fluttershy was, but he couldn't have gotten out. That's how they described how the magic sucking throne works, is it just sucks magic. It doesn't put up a barrier, it just disables all magic wielding creatures. So the way that works is Discord would have made it there, but couldn't have gotten out. Or, depending on the total mechanics of magic and when the magic stops being used during teleportation, they would have been cancelled out as the magic was depositing them next to Fluttershy, so they could have gotten caught in some sort of limbo. Yeah, but apparently it's acting as a barrier, not a sucking device. Even if there's a barrier, a, a cross point when their magic starts getting sucked, they would have made it inside, is the way I'm thinking. They would have made it inside, but not gone out, which is much better for how that should have worked, if you think about it, for the changelings, because it's just like kind of flypaper, or a trap. The magic users get in there, they suck the love out of them because they can't get out. Much better! Yes, but to defend them, who says Thorax had it correct? Mm, good point. You know, he's just one underling in an entire hive, and apparently a lower level one at that. She called him a measly grub, but I'm pretty sure that was just an insult. 
Yes, but if you think about it, basically from the time of his hatching, he has not been thrilled about being a changeling. So odds are he didn't make it very far in changeling society. Oh, well, since we spent so much time on the negative, except for a little part where we're like, we like this episode, let's switch over to the positive. I like the buildup and the finish for Starlight Glimmer. It makes her a better character, especially she had that wonderful 180 at the end of season five. <laughs> this was a great culmination, great lead up. The fact that we didn't use the main six as the heroes was awesome. I like the Motley crew, but when we get to that point of when they're staying outside the kingdom and they go, oh, we only have us. I'm like, oh, no, you don't. Starlight's village that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode would have worked well too because we basically have the main six there of her friends. I mean, even mentioned them at the beginning of the episode. Wouldn't it have been nice to for Starlight to go, hey, Discord, can we go back and get these ponies? Yeah, can we go get Party Favor and Sweetie Belle and everybody else? It's an entire village that has not been taken over, over. that included magic users and regular ponies, and ponies that had all sorts of special talents, which we saw them use when they were going and got their cutie marks back and rescued the main six and restored their cutie marks. Though the only thing that just popped into my head now that probably stopped her from even thinking that direction is the beginning of the episode where she feels she couldn't lead them because she's a terrible leader. And she's afraid of what they think of her and how she shouldn't be in charge and also give her credit for panicking. She just found out that everyone that she trusts except for Trixie is a changeling. Mm-hmm. Or has been taken over by a changeling, not has been a changeling the whole time. Yeah, I, I just love the fact of, uh, poor Trixie. And I also love the fact that Trixie's like, gotcha again, Twilight, I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> I know, she's just such a little snot about that. I, I just love poor Twilight. Twitch, 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 twitch. I, I, I'm dealing with this just by, I meant me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's nice to show that Twilight, even though she's attained princesshood and is the princess of friendship, still has issues. Mm -hmm. That she's not perfect. And this is now going over to the second dream sequence that Starlight had. During the whole thing where Luna was trying to crawl off the moon, I think they were dragging her to the changeling kingdom. And it was just before she got to the barrier. And so she was able to use her magic and that uh, what looked to be a changeling that was pulling her back from the dreams wasn't an actual changeling. It was just a visual representation of the magic being pulled out of her. Yeah, because there's no reason for an actual changeling to show up in the dreamscape because, mm -hmm. you know, this is Dream Luna. Speaking of Dream Luna, I like her little star cloud exit animation there in the first dream. And another thing I thought while I was watching the episode that didn't turn out to be true was how well the changeling Twilight was acting, I actually thought that was Queen Chrysalis because she was way smarter than the other changelings because they were acting stupid as the main six. They were being very stupid as the main six. The fake Twilight was a bit better, and yes, I know Twilight's part of the main six. Don't criticize my semantics, please. <laughs> so it was like she was a higher level mm -hmm. changeling, but I thought you were supposed to do research before you took somebody over. Mm-hmm. At least that's our head canon, and no, we're probably not going to share the stories. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that thing. I was thinking, like, well, she's acting so much better. She must be Queen Chrysalis. That would be a nice touch, because Twilight was the one that defeated her before, taking over her position. Except that it was technically Cadence and Shining Armor that defeated her before, because they're the ones who did that lovely love barrier. Mm -hmm. Also, another little technical thing, when they first had Chrysalis... They were doing something with the voice recording to make it sound a little bit different. Also, another funny thing going on in this episode is Trixie and Chrysalis, same voice actor. Nice. So that was a nice little thing there. Trixie has always actually voiced Chrysalis. Now I'm going to want to double check that dead, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, what were your favorite things about the episode since I've been going on about mine? <laughs> yeah, the whole Motley Crew assembly and... Discord's reaction when, wait, that includes Fluttershy, Fluttershy. fire in the eyes, we're going. <laughs> like, oh yes, the Lord of Chaos on our team, that's excellent. Right up into the point of, what do you mean no magic? <laughs> None of us knows how to function without magic. Yeah, and I'm also trying to figure that out specifically with Discord. I know his magic was able to be funneled out of him by T-Rex. 
I, I know they have to do this to make him more compatible and less Mary Sue-ish slash omnipowerful as he was when he was first introduced. But I always thought his magic was like so different that things like magic sucking stuff wouldn't affect him because he can literally control the universe. He can bend things like a genie that hasn't been freed from a lamp. <laughs> yeah, so it really didn't make sense for his power level and the way his power level has been portrayed in other episodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can literally bend reality, you should be able to bend the reality of, oh, there's a throne that sucks magic. It's no longer there. Yeah, that should have totally worked, especially if you did it outside the barrier zone. Mm -hmm. Because out there, your magic works. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. uh, please continue. <laughs> and especially the dichotomy between Trixie and Discord, because, you know, he's super phenomenal, nearly cosmic, and she's basically a street illusionist, even though she's a unicorn. Yeah, I like how those two really started to get along at the end. I really hope we see more of that in the further seasons. And I really like how, to me, the writing is overall getting better and more solid. And we're getting a nice cast of characters. And things are becoming more interesting over time because of how we're writing these characters and how we're doing this stuff like we now have these interactions between Trixie and Discord and Starlight Glimmer and the main six and the main six with other things and yeah or really expanding the focus you know not everything is now about the main six it's much more diverse and I mean, we saw that a little bit in Slice of Life, where the main six were just in the background while all of this other stuff was happening. And I would like to know if that changeling that was in the audience was actually Thorax, or if we had two rogue changelings. Or how some people see it, episode 100 didn't actually happen canon. It was just a side fun thing for the fans. Everything is canon until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. Though I don't know. There may have been something about the staff saying it's not canon, but we'll move on. It's technically in show. I'm going to call it canon for now. <laughs> so. Also nice was how Thorax was getting lost inside the Changeling Hive when they were saying that only Changelings could make it through. Because I immediately went to, he's changed too much. He's no longer in sync with the Hive, so he can no longer navigate. Mm. And speaking of changed too much, what do you think about the new look for the changelings. I myself would have been okay with how Thorax changed, just the wings. That was a nice change to me, but I thought the overall change for everything felt a little bit, especially at the end where he was like, just share your love, and suddenly everyone's doing it. I would have been okay with we saw a bunch of changelings leave with Queen Chrysalis at the end, but we also got a lot changing because that would have been a really neat battle. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't have been so easy to get a wholesale change of the entire hive. Mm -hmm. Especially even in insects hives. If a new queen arises, she takes some of them with her and leaves. She doesn't take the whole hive and go and leave the old queen behind. No, so following insect, it should have been a split. And a split would have been much more interesting. Because it shouldn't have been that easy to get a wholesale buy-off buy-in mm -hmm. for the changelings based on what Starlight Glimmer, who is not a changeling, tells them. Mm -hmm. And I think I would have been okay with Thorax having that full transformation mm -hmm. if the others just had partial transformations mm -hmm. because he's had more time. The rest of them needed more love. Yeah, because how did they have that much love to share? Because they were all bringing it back to feed Chrysalis. Because that's what you do. The workers go out and bring stuff back for the queen and just take like this much. These are all like minor problems, but they're still problems that were like, they were so easy to fix though. That's the thing. They're so easy to fix. <laughs> yes. And then the final form, the change of them, I could see making them more colorful because it is a children's show and mm -hmm. they're less dark and all that, but they don't really look insect-like at all. So... That makes me question, okay, is this their true form? Was Chrysalis somehow originally like that and she descended to this other more insect-like level and because she was the queen, she controlled and forced the hive into the same state? Hmm. The real question is, is she an original queen? Are there other queens? Are there other changeling hives? Or is she the only one? And considering the form that the other changelings took, 
is she actually a changeling? Mm. Even though we've seen her do transformative magic and the changelings were loyal to her up until Starlight's little pep talk, that that could be why she was so incompatible with Thorax's way. You know, if she's doing everything that she's doing because it's what she wants, because, okay, if you do this other route, then you're never hungry again. I don't know, that sounds pretty good to me. If changelings are always starving. So if the changelings are always starving, I'm not a nice person when I'm hungry. Wouldn't you want to not be hungry? I mean, if you could just do one little thing and never have to eat again. Okay, I love food, but you get the idea. If you could go from always being starving for something to always being satiated, wouldn't you rather be satiated? Yeah, but it's still kind of unsettling when the whole switch over happens so quickly. It's like, I know we need to resolve things, but you can still have a dirty resolve. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy. And just because Chrysalis got away does not mean it's not neat and tidy, because that is neat and tidy. What would have been messy and more normal and would have worked better for the story, as we said before, is a group of the changelings leaving with her. Yes, and I definitely want more explanation of why the changelings look the way they do now. By the way, Thorax looks very nice. And everyone seems to be kind of referring to them as, at least what I've seen and heard from other people, is fae. You mm -hmm. know, the Irish kind of demons you usually don't see. Well, they're kind of like demons, but they're also of nature and wind and ground and earth and fire and summer, winter, fall. The designs are sparkly and otherworldly enough to fall into the category of the more beautiful types of fae. But if they're actually fey, they're probably more dangerous now than when they were changelings. Mm -hmm. Because feys are always playing tricks on other races and getting them into bad bargains and taking revenge for real or imagined slights. Ah, I wonder if they now have that problem of iron. Iron is deadly to most fey, except yes. for the royalty. Mm -hmm. But it would be kind of interesting if they do become the MLP version of fey with whatever details that may entail. Mm -hmm. I feel like the first thing Celestia does after she gets freed and everything gets settled, she goes over to the current leader and goes, let's negotiate. Talk to you later. We should leave you all alone. So, can we go somewhere? Poor, poor Fluttershy. <laughs> <laughs> How about we all go to Fluttershy's for tea? Um, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> like she doesn't have that kind of room, so nice save Starlight. But also going back to Fluttershy and Discord. Really? Discord. You weren't sure that that was the real Fluttershy, which was smart of you. But then more Fluttershy show up. That was your cue to start running very, very quickly. And a very specific clue for that situation is the fact that that Fluttershy started crying. Based on current Fluttershy, she would have gone, I understand. You can't trust me. It's okay, Discord. That is how you tell the real Fluttershy from the fake Fluttershy. The fake Fluttershy is, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so meek, oh! And the real Fluttershy is like, I understand. Even in the earlier versions of Fluttershy, she would be frightened, but she would have gone, okay, I understand. Because that's how Fluttershy is. Yeah, and Discord should know her well enough to know that. And even if you thought that one was the real Fluttershy after seeing the other Fluttershys, grab that one and start running and get captured that way Instead of standing there looking at, oh my goodness, all the Fluttershies. Also, that was very cruel to do the fans to show them a bunch of crying Fluttershies. <laughs> we also got the classic, let's split up the team. Everyone tackles something and has to handle it, and the rest of them have to move on. Because mm -hmm. everybody could handle a particular thing. And I do like the switcheroo at the end where we think it is actually Starlight, and then we find out it's... Thorax. That, that was nice. That was good. And I also like Trixie's smoke bomb trick because I wasn't thinking about Thorax doubling as her. Because mm -hmm. I was like, how is she pulling that off? She doesn't have enough magic to teleport. Starlight doesn't have any magic to teleport her. And I was like, oh, duh. Brilliant. Yeah, because it actually hit me. After the first smoke bomb and she appeared over there, I was like, that's probably Thorax. And then the whole meetup was like, yep, that's Thorax. I also like, can we use a different code word? <laughs> yeah, but it, it was very good because who else is going to come up with that particular phrase? And considering <clears throat> that I think Discord is actually one of a kind, it's interesting that there actually is a name for what he is. Mm -hmm. 
And Delancey's performance in this episode was really good, too, especially the stand-up. That was awesome. That was great. And I love that it was all stuff out of Trixie's bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. You know, the smoke bombs, the micro... Because we saw the microphone earlier in her stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when she takes on the fake Discord with the handkerchief trick. It was a very well done episode. But like we said before at the beginning, those were our only real problems with it and it's just because we're we expect so much out of this show now their writing has gotten more solid there's a lot of world building going on there's a lot of character building going on we now have characters within the main six we can follow and still have big adventures with it's just wonderful and then ah so what else do you have to say about this episode this also includes nitpicks <laughs> <laughs> well, I've kind of been nitpicking as we go along. A very minor nitpick. Discord took way too long to conjure those flying pigs at the end of the episode because I expected it to be done with a snap of the fingers and, uh, well, for him, snap of the claws. But I actually snapped my fingers at the speed that I thought they were going to appear mm -hmm. instead of him doing the whole genie, your wish is my command. I laughed so hard when I first saw that. It was like, uh-oh, watch what you say, Trixie. <laughs> Like, he can manipulate reality, so by saying when pigs fly, he's like, oh, you mean right this second? Are you putting a show on right now? I mean, we are at a festival. <laughs> and I like how Rainbow Dash is like, yeah, someone has to catch us up on what happened. <laughs> yeah, you know, re-emphasizing that we as the audience know things that the characters don't. And I just thought of a way to one-up this season finale, next season finale, have the Cutie Mark Crusaders save the day. And speaking of season finales and starts, I had an idea for how we can do the season start of next season. Have Chrysalis sneak in and free Turek. She can easily transform into Princess Celestia, go in and free him, or even talk with him, then reveal to him, like, I am Queen Chrysalis. You can help me destroy these ponies. Specifically, this one called Starlight Glimmer. Because <laughs> if you think about it, those two kind of work together. Yes, Chrysalis and Chirik go really well together because they both suck power from other ponies. Chrysalis taking love and Chirik taking magic. But we barely got any of King Sombra. Have Chrysalis bring King Sombra back because she still needs to get revenge against the Crystal Empire. And the Crystal Empire is the greatest source of love right now because Cadence, Shining Armor, and Flutterheart. Mm -hmm. Apparently a specifically Flutterheart. That's also why I'm wondering, like, why didn't they just bring Flutterheart back to the hive? They could have been sitting there glowing in it all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Flurryheart. Flurryheart. Well, we got that wrong. Moving on. We corrected ourselves. Flurryheart. Uh, yeah. Them going to the Crystal Empire would work well. King Sombra coming back would really work nice. I almost think it would be kind of funny for, well, kind of funny and terrifying at the same time, for Queen Chrysalis to stumble on the horn and the horn attaches to her. And we get kind of a weird King Zombra slash Queen Chrysalis mix-up, match-up, horrifying crystal love. Crystal. <laughs> you know, because apparently Sombra only has a one-word vocabulary. Well, anytime he speaks, it's one word. Mm -hmm. Or, ah. <laughs> and we thought Big Mac had few lines. <laughs> yeah, this Big Mac is interesting. We didn't really get much regarding Sombra other than He's evil and uses dark magic and enslaves ponies. Talk about a one-dimensional character. Ah, so what are your final thoughts? Really enjoyed this. It's nice that I was able to still be surprised, even though I was slightly spoiled on the finale. Glad to see the return of the changelings. Uh, annoyed that it was resolved so quickly slash easily. I'm sure the ponies involved would say, you call that easy? <laughs> From the audience perspective, yes. Oh, look, we magically snapped our fingers, and everyone's now a good changeling. Isn't that wonderful? Not really. <laughs> well, I really like these two episodes. Like I said, my only real problem was the fact that we didn't have any build-up. If we had build-up, these episodes would have been really good. Especially since it would have left us room to add other stuff in. And we could have done more development and had more fun with Discord, Trixie, Starlight, and especially Thorax. Because we would have known Thorax more. We would have enjoyed his character more. We would have been more invested in him. Ah, both episodes were really enjoyable. I like the fact that we didn't use the main six. I like the fact that they were out of the way. I like the fact that we had that motley crew of four. I just really like pretty much everything about this episode except for the price. I was like, really? And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episodes 25 and 26. To where and back again? If you enjoyed this... 
please subscribe. And if you want to see more of my art, you can come over to my DeviantArt, my Tumblr, or if you have Twitter, you can go over there and visit that too. Link will be in the description or on screen somewhere. If you want to help me continue to do my art, head over to my Patreon and give me a, a dollar or something to help me give more money to be able to sit here and draw the wonderful stuff that you may or may not like. I, I really hope you like it. And if you don't like us talking, go ahead and mute the video, put on some music, watch the drawing.